Sup, 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 I'm ready for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council, and this is a beginner's guide how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So if you're ever interested, or you're just curious, this will teach you exactly how to do it. What we have in front of us is called a playmat. This is a sneak peek playmat. We're going to go into sneak peeks at a later time. Let's go over the basics of the rules. Your deck can only be 40 cards minimum. That means the smallest you can have it has 40 cards. The biggest you can have it is 60. You don't have to have an extra deck. Those extra decks require fusions, exceeds, or synchros. I have two of them here. A synchro is white and exceed is black, and a fusion is purple. <coughs> you can only use 15 cards in your extra deck, and those are monsters you will summon from the extra deck by other means. This is your field card zone. Each player will start with 8,000 life points. They do not start with a field, it's not like magic. So, for those of you magic players, uh, kaijudo players, a little bit different. This is your deck zone. This is where your deck goes. So we're gonna we're gonna just place our deck there. And this is the graveyard, and that was a cat meowing. This is uh, basically your discard pile. So anytime the card goes to the discard pile, there you go. That's what the graveyard is. <coughs> then we have our spell and trap zones, which I back here. This is a trap, for example. This is a normal trap. Add a new set tachyon. It has requirements to activate it in the text box. You know it's a trap because a it's pink and b it says trap over here. So basically what you have to do is activate a track card, you have to set it down face, face down for one turn, meaning on my turn I set it and I say you may go ahead and act, you know, use your move. When your opponent goes into their move, you can now activate your track card. As long as you meet the requirements to activate, which it will tell you in the text box. For spell cards, you can activate them at any time on your turn. Quick play, uh, quick play spell cards, which we're going to show in a later video when we go into it will actually allow you to activate on your opponent's turn, kind of like a trap. But, there's other rules to that, but we're not going to get into that. We're just going over normal traps, normal spells, and monsters. So, there you go, the traps. Now, since my tripod doesn't want to work with me today, I'm going to draw the starting hand. Each player will start with five cards. I don't run this in here, so I was just using that as an example. So, we draw our five cards. We may look at them by our opponent is going first. So we're just going to place them out like this so you can see. Alright, so what we have here is a normal monster. How do we know it's normal? Well, it has a flavor text, means it doesn't have any effect in the box. But it is a tuner, which it tells you right there. Let's see if we could just get in there, let it focus. You can see it's tuner. The attack points are representative right there and defense right next to it. So this monster's attack is 1400 and 1200 defense. You get one normal summon per turn and basically you cannot summon a monster higher than four stars. Right where I have the camera pointed, you can see the four stars. Right up here is the attribute of the card. This is the card's name, the picture of the card. And since this is a normal monster, it just has its little like flavor text. You know, it's, it tells a little bit of the story. Over here we have what's called an effect monster. You can know it's an effect monster because it'll say effect next, in, next to its type. The attribute is water, and we know this one's dark. There are six attributes in the game. Now, we can also tell that this is a five-star monster, meaning we can't just normal summon it. But since it has an effect, we can special summon it, which is another requirement, which we'll go into in a moment. Here we have a spell card, which I said before can be activated as long as it meets a requirement at any time on your turn, except for battle phase, which goes into the next video. Here we have a two-star monster, and this is a three. You can tell by the stars just by looking at them. Sometimes you need to count them and you just put your finger on it. Okay, so my name is Ryu. My opponent's name is going to be Timmy, just as per example. Timmy says I may go first because we did a dice roll, and he won the dice roll, meaning he got the higher number, and decided to go second, so I'm going to go first. So the turn player will draw one card from their deck. Doesn't matter, just top card. And you get to look at your hands and decide what you want to do. Not like this, you want to actually just hold it like poker. You want to hold it up and not show them. Okay, so I have three monsters I can normal summon. I have Gen X Controller, Nimble Angler, and Atlantean Marksman, who comes out of a structure deck. Okay, so why can't I summon Dragon Ice? I'm going to explain this to you. You get one normal summon. That's my normal summon for the turn. If I place it in attack mode, it just goes face up. If I place it in defense mode, it has to be set. This is a set. Now, when a set is flipped, it 
count as a flip summon. Now, there's normal summon, flip summon, special summon, and about 20 other summons, which you'll learn later on. But with this, it's pretty freaking easy. So, you just go by, hmm, do I want to put in attack mode, defense mode? But how do I know to put in attack or defense mode? See, Marksman here has 1400 attack with zero defense. So, say Timmy has it on the board. This is the board, okay? That's why I refer to it as. You can have five monsters at any time, meaning that it would take five turns that you have them and keep them on the board. You can have five spells or traps. You can, you can actually just set a spell like that, just like a trap card. That's called a set. It means putting the face down. So how do I know which monster will win the battle? Simple. The monster with the highest attack points wins the battle. 1400, 1400. What happens in this case? They both die. So they both go to the card graveyard if they do battle. The Dragon Ice has a lot more power, but I can't really seem to summon it because it requires one tribute. Let's go over tribute summon that. So if I have a monster on turn and my opponent makes their turn and my monster's still on the field, on my turn, as long as I have the requirements, level 5 and level 6 require one tribute. Level 7, 8, and higher require two, sometimes three. It depends on the card. It'll say, it'll say it in the text. So what do I do to summon it? I say I tribute my Genex controller, so that means I put him in the card graveyard. Then I am allowed to summon my Dragon Ice, usually a more powerful monster. It's simple as that. Okay, when can you do a tribute summon? A tribute summon is also counted as a normal summon. A special summon is not counted as a normal summon. It means you can do as many special summons as you could possibly pull off in a turn, even on your opponents. Dragon Ice is a case example of this. Nimble Angler has an effect that when sent to the card graveyard from hand or gray uh, hand or deck, I get to search my deck and special summon two nimble monsters. So I'm just gonna put them out right now. And that's a special summon. They came right out of the deck because the effect activated with Nimble Angler. So if Timmy does this, then Dragon Knight's effect allows me to activate it. Which means I can discard one card, which means I send it to the graveyard, and now I'm allowed to special summon it to the field. Simple as that. I can even discard Dragon Ice for Dragon Ice. Or I can discard another card for Dragon Ice. Like Nimble Angler and get its effect to get two little fishes there. The little fishes aren't going to do much, but they still count as a special summon. And then from there, if you match the levels up, you can go to an exceed summon. But if you have a tuner like Gen X Controller, and you match the levels up with a little, little match. Okay, so Gen X Controller is level 3. How do we know it's a tuner? We just look right there. These guys don't have that, it just as fish in effect, so we know they're not tuners. So I have two, five, six, seven all together. That means I could put them all in the graveyard and say I synchro summon, as long as I have a tuner. I could summon for a black rose dragon because it has level seven, or I could summon this guy who has level seven. But how do I exceed summon? Well, that's pretty simple too. If I have two monsters that have the same level, then I can exceed summon. And it just becomes a rank instead of a level. So you just overlay them. So they become like a little cookie. You, just, you know, you ever seen Oreo cookies? You put them on, just like the top. You sit there like that, and there, you've made an exceed summon. That's going to cover the basics of the beginner's guide and everything you need to know. Each player starts with 8,000. That's your little recap. You have an extra deck that can go up to 15 cards. There's no field card um, deck. It just a few cards are played out of your deck. We're going to go over ritual summoning, fusion summoning, and synchro, proper synchro summoning in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it was insightful for you. But there's a lot more to learn. So this is just a start. So for those of you who are more advanced, don't fret. I'm going to be going into a lot more about chains, the damage step, in depth, and the probability of building your deck and adding certain cards to your deck to help you speed up your deck. Yeah, it sounds a little confusing, but I'm going to make it pretty easy. So I'm ready for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. I hope you found this video insightful or you just liked it. Simple as that. Hope to see you on the next one. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe if you like what you saw. For more how-to guides, look on the council on our how-to playlist, which we'll be pumping these out about every two weeks. But you may do it sooner as long as we see you know people are really really interested in these beginner steps so if you like what you saw make sure to subscribe to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council for more beginner's guide i'm ryu peace